Are you? Yeah. From Monty Python. Am I from Monty Python? Yeah. What is that even? What? The coconuts. Oh, that's a, that sounds like a coconut? Yeah. It sounds like a guy pretending to be a horse with coconuts. Ah, see, that's what I was. I was a horse riding into town. Mm. Yeah. Mm, like, nice. a, like a cowboy, but not the cowboy, just the horse without a cowboy. Mm. Mm-hmm. In a land where horses run things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mayor town. America. America. Mayor? A mayor. Yeah, I yeah. get it. Yeah, I see. Because our guest this week, just rem- I, I, he always has reminded me of a horse. <laughs> Like I feel like he would not take offense to that. And there's nothing offensive about it. It's a compliment. Yeah. It's a beautiful animal. And he's a great guest for yeah. our 50th episode, but we should probably tell new listeners what they're listening to right now. Ah, this is the podcast. The podcast. <laughs> the podcast? Yeah. The bobcat. The bobcat. This is the podcast, like a bobcat. It springs out at you yeah. from the woods. Uh, it's called Five Words. Yep. Uh, this is Caitlin. Hi. That's Sean. That's me. Uh, each week we have a guest that gives us five words from a random story of theirs based on those five words and what we know of the guest. Mm-hmm. We formulate what we think the story is, mm-hmm. pitch it back to them. Yep. They tell us if we're wrong or real wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, then they tell us the real story and we chat about it. Yeah. That's the podcast. That's it. And it's our 50th episode. And as our guest, we have Christopher Funk. I, th- I think his <laughs> legal name is just Chris. Oh, really? No, I made that up. Oh. Uh, yeah. Chris Funk, uh, guitarist, producer, uh, member of the band, the the Novemberistas. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> God, that's a fucking joke that's probably been made th- thousands oh, of times. Oh, my God. For that's sure. A, but a band called the Decemberists. Yes. Uh, uh, if you, uh, and if, if, whether or not you like their music, they've been on The Simpsons. That's true. So f- it doesn't matter. But their music is also pretty goddamn great. He's also like worked with... The Shins and Blue Giant, and he has a band called Black Prairie. And Black he, Prairie, also He's produced also albums great. for a fuck ton of people. He's yeah. a badass. So Red Red Fang, he produces Red Fang, a lot of their Red stuff. Miller, yeah, oh uh, yeah. But the, the Decemberists are legit great and legit. I met. He came to a show I was doing at the wonderful Helium Comedy Club in Portland, Oregon, and tweeted at me afterwards. And this was like five years ago. Awesome. And we, him and I, have been we've hung out a bunch. He's a got some crazy stories. He's a fun guy. He's mm-hmm. a great all around guest, and he's in Portland. Yeah, right now. His and in Portland, I I guess I don't. I feel like I don't know Portland. It, it always felt like one of those cities that when the shit hit the fan, yeah, like they would already have something up their sleeve. Yeah, uh, because they had a TV show made about them. Uh huh. Called Portlandia. Yeah, I know. But. Uh, Turns out, no. <laughs> only, thing up, out, only thing up those mm, sleeves is more tattoos. Yes. <laughs> but and, still. And a great musician yeah, named awesome Chris Awesome city. Uh, yeah, check check it out. You're going to love this episode. Sean, what do you have to plug? Uh, Friday night, 1033 Eastern Time. Caitlin and I are doing our live streaming show on Twitch at holdthephone.tv. It's mm-hmm. called Live at 1033. 1033. And this week's guest is AJ Holmes from Book of Mormon, South Park, and Star Kid Productions. So you should tune in. Do it. Yeah, do it. What else are you going to do? I'm also going to plug... I mean, a lot. But yeah, you're going to do a lot. Hmm. But you're also going to watch this live stream show also at holdthephone.tv. It's my show, Good God. And this week, tonight, when this episode is released, hmm. um, the April 21st, yes, yeah. um, we have... Ron Funches and Dan St. Germain and Alingnon Mitra and a bunch of other people. So tune in, 9 p.m., holdthephone.tv. So Laco, there's a lot for you to do this week. There is. So start with this episode and jump on the other things and see you next week. Uh, you can email your thanks yeah. to... Uh, live at 1033 yeah, at gmail.com. Live at 1033 at gmail.com. There sure, you go. That's our shared email. And um, while Sean coughs... Oh, you're not going to cough. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to hold it. It's a peanut-inspired cough, not anything else. Well, I'll give you one more thing to do this week. (gasps) There it is. And that is to go listen to Funk's music. Uh, He's releasing a new album, which he'll tell you about at the end of the episode. So you better stay tuned. Do it. Enjoy. Woo! (laughs) Mirror! Chris, do 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 you have a Morley pedal? Like a Morley wah-wah pedal? Yeah. <laughs> I don't hear no. Why? Oh. My okay. grandpa invented the Morley wah pedal. Are you kidding me? 
No. Yeah. My I, I own one, but not here. I do have one. I thought you meant like right now. Yeah. We have yeah, so many. Sean, the reason Sean brought it up, I guess, is that he's sitting right underneath a bunch of them. Oh, sweet. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. The OG. Yeah. Fuck yeah. The plugger inner ones. Yeah. That's amazing. It's a more, it's the volume wah pedal to be exact. Yeah. We have, oh, a, yeah. We have a ton, obviously. But mm-hmm. Was that his last name? No, um, he was a really big punster, and Leslie was very big at the time and kind of his competitor. So he was like, Why well, have Leslie when you can have Morley? And he did Morley. <laughs> that's wow. amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've rocked the Morleys forever. Hey, this one. This fucking- oh, that's amazing. That, that one I can bring around. Ooh. The other ones are. Wow. So is that, I mean, those are all like the original ones. Yeah. The metal casings, the metal, because they're all like black, like now. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize how many we had up here. Yeah, there's like a, and there's a ton of my mom's house, but I'm the only yeah. musician in the family, so I'm the only one that's kind of using them, and I'm still not really using them. So, so he he was like somewhat of an engineer. He was more of an inventor than yeah. He that's so cool. created the wah pedal just because he liked taking things apart and putting them back together in weird ways. Nice. So, yeah, that's rad. I think the Morley that I have now is a um, it's elliptical. Oh, nice. Meaning not like a trainer it uses optics for the um uh, where the where the pedals at instead of like a geared system or a string cool but yeah that's fucking rad man that's so cool yeah is he from are you from the east coast are you from new york no i'm from la i grew up in la so he made it out there yeah because i know there was like of i'm assuming your grandfather was in the 70s or 60s he started making those yeah yeah there was also like Electro Harmonics, which is in Jersey. So I wonder if he knows those people at all. He probably did. Yeah. There weren't many pedal builders back in the day. It was kind of like a weird thing, you know, like to have a guitar. It's like normal now. Yeah. But pedals were like a weird thing. People didn't use them. Yeah. His was one of the first and it was used by like Black Sabbath and a ton of oh, yeah. people. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. That good. is, wait, Caitlin, are we recording right now? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we're um, in Pedal Talk. Yeah. Hey, look, pedal talk is I, like, I, I wish so, sometimes I get jealous of musicians based solely on gear. Right. You know what I mean? Like, just I like, get jealous of comedians based on the fact that I can't just show up to a club and not have to lug a bunch of gear around. So. Right. But sometimes, and I'm sure, I don't, I don't know. Like, I guess if a comedian's lugging gear around, it's fucking, uh, it, it's like props. Yeah, you know, like a ventriloquist, a ventriloquist, yeah, like, perhaps. If I'm lugging gear around, I, you know, it's actually kind of amazing to me that there's only one carrot top. That there hasn't been like another, and I'm sure there are if you dig deep in there. <laughs> well, he you know was what I mean? good. I, I'm sure there's terrible prop comics. There's Gallagher, but he's more of a stunt man, perhaps. Yeah, that was more of like a destroy a prop comic. Well, I mean, but that's the thing. Like, okay, but carrot top, like. Pro, the thing I that I, that I admire about prop comedy is we're going neither, deep on carrot top. I'm excited. We really are. It's, it's, it's neither <laughs> like seventy million dollars. He's crazy. of course he is. Of course That's he crazy. is. Crazy. You don't you don't need to speak English to like get his shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Look at the but like that's what I'm saying. Like prop comedy is neither good nor bad. It just is. You know what I mean? Right. You laugh at it sometimes because it's like, that's so stupid. And other times because you're like, oh my God, that's actually kind of brilliant. That'd be a um, fun challenge for you, Sean, is to do a set of prop comedy only. Yeah. It'd be kind of amazing. Dude, I might. I mean, give me it. A, I mean, I got the time. $70 million. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I, know. I, got the props. I got the time. Just fucking start tinkering <laughs> with stuff. Just do a little pivot to prop comedy. Like, I'm completely broke, but I have $1 million worth of comedy props now in a warehouse yeah, in yeah. fucking Jersey. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even, like, I don't even know, like, what, like, a, like, a, like I, that's the thing. Like, that level of, like, ingenuity to be, like, to just be sitting around and looking at, like, a coffee mug and a hairbrush and just being, like, holy smokes. <laughs> I got an idea for a, you know, a, I don't even know. What do you, what do you? You see, I don't, I don't, I can't think of anything, but I'm sure he'd be like, oh yeah, a coffee mug and a hairbrush. Yeah, you, you throw know. in a rubber band and you got to there's a very fine line between Carrot Top and MacGyver. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know I mean? And the knife balloon guy. Do you know about that guy? No. He's like an Instagram. He's not funny, but his shit's funny. He's, he basically 
creates um, installation art using knives, his body, and balloons. That's always the three oh, things. Didn't he recently injure himself? He fucking injured himself in the time of COVID, and he was like, he felt like horrible because he needed to go get stitched up and shit. But yeah, I saw uh, something about this dude. So you need limitations, Sean. I mean, that almost show. is like, that's almost like part of the art right there is like, if you have to go get stitched up, this should be part of it during the time of COVID. This is like a part of your art is learning how to st- do your own stitches like a fucking cowboy. <laughs> fucking Rambo. Dude, that reminds me of one time, like, I, I don't, I, I only have probably a couple of handfuls of enjoyable high on marijuana moments in my life, <laughs> unfortunately, because uh-huh. I get panic attacks every time I get too high. Oh, yeah. I remember every time I was high and like love it and it was good the whole time. Uh, but one of those times we invented a game called Steely Man, where it was <laughs> the, the idea was all the players dressed in armor covered in hot spikes, right? And okay. the ball was a balloon, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and every player had a giant, like those, like, you know, those like Mardi Gras style, like long plastic horns. Yeah. That like, but yeah, like you had Brazilian one of those. soccer horn. Right. And like you had one of those and that's how you controlled the balloon is you had to blow it around. <laughs> and if it fell on you and popped uh, whatever part of the armor uh, it fell on, you had to remove for the rest of the game. Right. And okay. it was full contact also, by the way. <laughs> so and the whole time steely dan was there and playing <laughs> playing like live live. Yeah. live and donald and, fagan is there and and they He's were doing the comment- shit. and they were doing the commentary through their music <laughs> see i love this this is almost like my idea for the pajama jam jam What's i want to do uh, just jam bands and everyone shows up in their pajamas and they have to <laughs> Jams and jellies, and we just have a, like a spread jam party. Pajama jam jam. That's why I want. Totally. Yeah. I'll fucking Wait, jam. Chris, do you watch Ozark? <laughs> I am watching Ozark. Are you? I'm in the second the- season though. Nice. Okay. I just started the third. Yeah, because because the third came out, and I was like, I should finish first, and then got sucked into second. Yeah. yeah. Now I I, I well, this won't ruin anything for you. It's a great show. Keep watching. But okay. um. Ario Speedwagon is in season three. Oh no way! Yeah, and and they got like a massive, like basically career boost from this because they they I'm gonna guess the casino gets built. They come to the casino. Yeah, you're guessing right. Uh-huh. Uh, but they also they're in it. They like they're in it for an episode and they play a bunch of Ario Speedwagon songs. And, and it's it's pushed them back up. Well, yeah, that happens. It's it seems like that's a thing that at this point is almost inevitable. If you're like, like, do you ever think about that with the Decemberist in like 15 years? If it's like a TV show comes out and it's like, hey, let's get the Decemberists here. Yeah. And you guys are all like in your 50s, like, all right, we'll go play. And then, <laughs> and, then <there's> like a, <laughs> and people are like, you remember the Decemberist from like the 90s and the aughts? Oh yeah. Uh, like you're- when there's like an aught, like, like you remember like 20, I feel like 10 years ago, there was like a big 80s boom. Oh yeah. Now it seems like there's somewhat of a nineties boom. It's, there will it, be an aught boom. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's funny too, because bands of our era just fucking don't die. They don't go away. Like you, you know, we've been this yeah. summer of shit goes right. We're going to do our 20th anniversary tour. Wow. That's so but, Jesus. Like those bands, like Wilco, for example, they're just going to keep going. Right. Yeah. So there's, they're not falling out of, I don't understand it. It's just like a different frame of mind. But we've joked about this a lot that we're going to do like a casino tour with the Shins and Modest Mouse and Spoon and the Decemberist, you know, like I that'll be our that. casino tour. <laughs> but continue. But Spoon's been a band for fucking yeah. maybe 30 years. And that dude, Britt Daniels, who's a friend of mine, that motherfucker looks like he's just out of high school. It's so strange. Yeah, yeah, so I don't I understand. Them, I saw them in Indy- Outside Lands when you did it, Sean, for Best Bars. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't understand like how our... I mean, I'm not saying I look like a spring chicken or anything like that, but these we still have like relevance somehow, and we haven't fallen into that. It's so strange. Well, you, it's a you guys are a great band, but also I've hung out and partied with y'all. You're pretty chill. Like you're not <laughs> like, chill. like I've never I've fun. never hung out with you guys where it's like oh great the Decemberists just showed up. Everybody right. uh, hide your wallets and don't snort anything. Listen, right. 
they're going to have each one of them going to offer you a different substance. Yeah. Don't do it. Like, no, you guys are like, uh oh, Chris just ordered up another bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> like, watch yeah. out. I mean, that said, that said too, Ario Speedwagon is part of our cultural fabric and they're like fucking these, they're a giant band, you know? So they, they're these giant bands that, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you guys were on the Simpsons. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. But there's, a, you know, there's, a, there's an animation of you. Mom still has, asks me if she can send money. Of course I say yes. Yeah. Stupid. <laughs> Do you still drive that old school Mercedes? That like eighty? No, <clears throat> that thing oh, that died. Thing. No, thing I live in I live in Portland, Oregon, and, and mm. shit here like starts to like it's like uh, nature starts reclaiming old shit here. It's like it, it's like a a green patina on it after a while, and that thing just molded over and kind of kind of croaked out. No, no, Dude, I'm driving what? a a 2018 Honda CRV now. Damn right, dude. Keeping Fucking it, dad rock up in here. Keeping it, like, keeping it <laughs> bad SUV blasting. That's right. I mean, the, the, that, I, I remember, I don't know if you remember this. This was one of my favorite random ass memories. I, I don't even remember why I was in Portland because it was for something very. You're playing helium. No, but that was when we met. Yeah. Or that, no, then I, then I, and I know I was there shooting best bars, but I think I was there. It was a it was a third time I was there just for some and I ended up staying with you and we went to some karaoke par, bar right and uh, Jim Yames oh yeah some called him Jim yeah. Yames of uh that my morning, uh, my my morning, morning jacket. jacket yeah I remember we were at this karaoke bar you went up and sung <laughs> fuck dude do you remember because you sang it you like. I thought you were going to go up there and dick around, but you like got you the, went up there and the only thing I sing at a karaoke bar is probably the outfield. Was that what it was then? You think? I don't want to lose your love tonight or whatever it's called. Yeah. Yeah. Or I'll attempt to rap, but I, well, I, remember I forgot. That. Yeah, we went out with Jim James. Holy we shit! We got hammered, but I remember like we uh, <laughs> we I I joking. I'm like I signed up to do. Uh, all my life by Casey and Jojo. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then Jim was like, Oh, I'll, I'll hop on. I'll sing highs. Right. You can do lows. Right. I'm like, Oh yeah. Yeah. I'll just do lows. <laughs> the fuck does that mean? Right. Yeah. Right. And we didn't get to because the, with the bar, it got to hit, it hit 2 AM. And I think that was, was the, the alibi in Portland, which is a, a tiki bar. I think that was at the alibi. Oh, that was a, that was a fun. I haven't been to Portland in too long and I, I miss it. Yeah, come I, on I out, know. man. I've never been as an adult. So. What, you came here to as a child for like a, your parents were like, yeah, Disneyland's in Portland. Yeah. No, we did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. We did a whole vacation before we drove up the coast and like. Oh, nice. Through Portland and, oh, awesome. Yeah. Caitlin in middle school did a semester of Japanese immersion. Oh. <laughs> that, that would be hilarious. No. That's, that's a thing. That's a, that. That's what my I, daughter does. Yeah, your daughter went right. Yeah, yeah that's, where, that's where school. it's coming from. Yeah, my daughter yeah. speaks Japanese. That's awesome. She's thirteen. Is that's she right, right over the corner there. That's my daughter right there. Yeah, and there's me on a on a BMX bike. <laughs> yeah. Wait, is your daughter actually fluent in Japanese or like? Yeah, she is. That's so amazing. cool. Yep. So she'll she'll be able to she'll be, she'll be able to uh, move millions of I don't even know like. What what is Japan's? I mean, everything really. Jesus, yeah. what don't they have? If you ask that, like, what's the point of learning Japanese? No, because I mean, like they they're. I, I went to I went to China in 2018, right? Oh, for a gig? For a gig, I was doing gigs in China. Yeah. Wow. Um, a lot of they all speak English relatively well, and there's a ton of expats there. Right. Um, Super but cool. China mainland like Hong Kong was amazing. Mainland China was kind of spooky because it was like, oh, this is for real, legit, Big Brother communism. Like it's yep. yeah, it's nuts. But everyone there was like, dude, go to Japan, go to Japan, Japan. I've always wanted to go. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's fantastic. You've been it's, a few times. I have, I have been. Yeah, and it's um, it is fantastic. Not to undersell the rest of Asia or anything, but or undercut the rest of Asia, but. The food is fantastic. I didn't eat a bad meal there. You'd just be like, I'm, I'm exhausted. I just need to find food right now. And you'd pop in somewhere and it's amazing. Um, yeah, it's just a, a beautiful 
place. I don't know. It's it's fantastic. The culture's killer. Um, it's great. You guys got to go. It's also funny when you like. I guess we you don't learn this as, as much as an American, but when when I was over there, I learned you you'd learn in detail just how big a dicks they used to be. Right. In Japan. Oh yeah. I was like, oh yeah, they were fucking assholes for. I didn't oh, realize yeah. they were that bad. Like just, oh, yeah. ran, just regularly invading mainland China. Just like, well, oh, it's yeah. Monday. What do you want to do? I don't know. Let's, yeah. invade, let's invade again. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if totally. we can conquer Shanghai again. Totally. <laughs> like, whoa, okay. No, totally. But, but yeah, it's like, easy I, from the from the West Coast too. You know, we're like super close to that shit. I mean, relatively. You're yeah. in New York, so it's like, yeah. I don't even know how you fly to fucking Japan. You got to fly all the way here six hours, and then you got to start the journey, you know? Yeah. So. When I lived in Chicago, I traveled around Southeast Asia and I went through Japan and that was fucking a long flight. And then the way back, we went the other way around the world and stopped in Qatar. That was right. like 34 hours of travel. Yeah. yeah. Wait, you told me once, didn't you, didn't you guys like fly to, I want to say Iceland, but maybe not Norway for like a one show and you flew back? Yeah, we did. That is, you see, that's insane. Yeah, because it's far. Yeah, I mean, living in New York. I mean, you guys should just like pop over to fucking London, right? We've done it quite a bit. Five hours. Like, it's not a big deal. Five hours. I mean, yeah, that's it's like us flying deal. to fucking New York. Boston yeah. or New York. You know? Yeah. No, precisely. It's, I'm so envious of that. But, yeah, I mean, well, you, you can get on a flight and in five hours be in Juneau, Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Fantastic. Or, or or Hawaii. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. fantastic didn't wasn't there a thing you you all were supposed to come out here come to brooklyn to play like at there was a festival at prospect park i want to say this was like three four years ago and it didn't happen for some reason do you remember this yeah yes what i don't remember it? why it's i've, I've been lately just, shell if it was a prospect park thing yeah but there was some it got canceled for some reason and oh, now i think our um our singer colin he was losing his voice Ah, there it is. So that whole last tour, he's like losing his voice, and we had to reschedule so much shit. Mm. Did he get it back? <laughs> it's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's there. Now, it's there. now, whenever I think of like things in the past that have been canceled, um, my it's like my brain automatically fills in with like, yeah, it was coronavirus. It's like, no, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I know the <laughs> great canceler. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude. Drag. The, uh, so we, uh, we asked, we ask, uh, like we do all of our guests, uh, for you to give us, uh, five words. Uh, can you, do you have the five words? Can you repeat them to me right now? I do. I'm going to double check, um, yeah. what they were. I'm pretty sure I know what they were here. They are. All right. Uh, Donner. All right. Terrorist. Right. Shit. Okay. Expired. Right. Cops. Boom. Donner terrorist shit expired cops. Mm -hmm. All right, correct. So this is this is this this is the story as we think it is. Um, you were walking down the street one day, mining your own, uh, you know, just musician in your head, thinking of guitar riffs, right? And you look over, you see a sign that says Donner. It says Donner, but you, in the moment, being the good-natured human being you are, misread it and thought it said Donor. And you thought for a second, we're like you know what? I'll donate some blood right now. I'm in a good yeah. mood. You know, I've been, I've been eating a lot of vitamin D and iron. My blood's in a good shape. Yeah, I'll go donate. I'll go donate right now. So you step into this place. You go in and it uh, turns out you read it wrong. It's actually a, a donor kebab shop. Right. And Common like, mistake. Well, you know what? I'm hungry. I'll order something. Yeah. In case I got to give blood later. Yeah. Right. And it, as you're ordering, the owner's son, little kid, eight years old, comes running out from behind the counter, uh, dressed as a zombie, and is like, ah, scares you. And you're like, whoa, buddy. And the little kid, because he's a kid, and he goes, I'm a terrorist, right? But he's got his, <laughs> he's saying the wrong word. He's trying to say he's a terrorist, mm -hmm. right? Um, like he, like he scares people. Oh, you know? okay. Yeah, I thought he, not, maybe he was like in love with the earth. Like no, no, no. like Terra. Uh, no, no, that would be interesting. But yeah. okay. I'm a, okay. I'm a I'm terrorist. You. And you're like, whoa, buddy. That's... <laughs> Ooh, don't say that. Yeah. But, it, but, it, but he did scare you that dressed it like a little zombie. And you were like, man, I, almost, I, I shit myself, you know, metaphorically shit yeah. myself. 
Right. Uh, so you sit down, you eat the food, and you go home, and you start to feel some little rumbly tumblies in your tummy, and you literally shit yourself. So you figuratively and literally shit yourself in the same day. And okay. you know, when you're finally feeling nice again, you're like, you know what I should do? I should just go mention to the owner of that shop that, you know. Something was expired. Something you know. was expired. Something was expired. <laughs> the meat, we're thinking. Yeah. And when you get back over there, uh, the cops are there because someone had called the cops because of the little eight-year-old kid jumping out on the street, scaring people and going, I'm a terrorist. You know, he just, once again, had his language wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and you were like, hey, don't worry, uh, officers. He's, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that's the story. And that's the end. So <laughs> wow, I applaud you. And thanks for having me on the show because you guys fucking nailed it. Yeah. <clears throat> and I don't even know how to recap because it's so, were you there? <laughs> <laughs> it was my shop. You don't recognize me? <laughs> I thought I recognized you. Wow. I was the kid. <laughs> yeah. So, Dirty uh, Sean the kebabist. Yeah, right. There you go. That's one of my. That's one of my. Um, uh, dude, that could be my um, prop comedy thing. Is I just make a kebab out of different things. Yeah, I'm like I love this it. is anxiety kebab, and it's just like ramen, a thing of Xanax, uh, 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 an iPad stuck on Pornhub. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm sorry. What is the Chris? What is the real story? <laughs> Holy shit. Well, as you mentioned earlier, my band is kind of, you know, we're just normie. We're just norms. We're not chill. You're chill. We're chill as fuck. So I was trying to think of some like tour stories or, you know, and, and several came to mind. And I mentioned earlier, it's like our 20th anniversary tour supposedly happening in August. So I was like, I was trying to think back to like early touring. And then I was like, all right, I remember a story of the first tour of, of Europe that we ever did. And um, we went on this tour. Our, first of all, our, our manager, um, how much time do I have for this, by the way? Oh, you got, you got, you got, you got, you got, you got as long as you want. Um, our manager sent us on this tour to Europe and this is 20 years ago, right? Um, that's actually not true. It was about 15 years ago. So 2003 or 2004, Went to right. Europe. None of us had cell phones. Right. Which is so crazy to think about, right? Um, yeah. Not have that access to that technology. There was a, there, I feel like 01 to 04, having a cell phone was optional. It was optional. Yeah. T9 was rampant. Um, <laughs> texting, yeah. what's that? Yeah. And went to Europe, went on this tour, and we landed there. We didn't have... When you're, when you're first starting out and like if you're going to Europe and as an American band, you probably got a label, maybe not, but you probably got like a point of contact in Europe. You land and maybe someone's going to meet you at the airport with a van. Right. Like that's like easy to do. And we didn't have that. We had to like, for some reason, like our manager just didn't have that arranged for us. And, and we weren't making a lot of money either then, you know, not that we're making a ton of money now, but we didn't have anything. So land at the airport, find the van in the Netherlands find this like shitty van company point being we're like driving ourselves around Europe. And, um, yeah. it was, it was, a, a, it was a crazy five week tour of Europe. Um, wait, can one of you drive on the opposite? Oh, you know, is your Europe's on American side driving on yeah. American side, but we did end up in England and, and, um, with that van. So it was weird, you know, driving opposite, mm -hmm. opposite, opposite. Yeah. Um, oh, like double sense. opposite double opposite <laughs> which is normal like the car should just disappear it should just be like, <laughs> <laughs> we're just hovercrafting the whole way yeah yeah um so we end up this tour was it was so poorly routed we were just driving to gigs without any directions whatsoever finally our manager sent us a fax like like the size of a telephone book a full of, of of map quest <laughs> we had to go to like an internet cafe oh. remember those yeah. Internet cafes. Internet and cafes. And hook, there were hookah bars for kids under 18. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And print this shit out. So we were like driving through like, like fucking Rome, trying to like read all these like instructions of how to get there, Germany, yada, yada. So anyways, tensions were high. Like we were like at each other's kind of throats. This is our first trip. Yeah. We're all stressed the fuck out. Um, Colin, our singer, later like looked at the routing of the tour 
And the tour starting up here, 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 it made a perfect pentagram. Like, not, no kidding. Like, of all of our destinations we had visited. It was just the tour that was cursed. The door on the Sprinter van didn't shut. It was a no, fucking nightmare. No. A pentagram. That's, that's, you see, that's the kind of shit I would pay far too much attention to. <laughs> you know? Of course we kept going. You know? You're like, why couldn't we just go one more stop <clears throat> south? Then it would make a star of David. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Have some then, blessings on us, at least, you know? But, um, oh, man. so we'd take turns driving and you, we would, we didn't have any hotels planned out in advance. Like, right. you know, we're so fucking handled now, but, and eventually in the vans, we were like a little handled. You could, you could figure out how to be, how to figure out where you're going to sleep the next night and wherever you're going. And, um, so we would, I guess I was just thinking about this today. I was like, God, I guess we would just fucking drive into the wilds of whatever country we're at and try to find a hotel after a show. Mm-hmm. and really and you know people still do that and it, it was just for us that's just like fucking crazy to think about think back I, on yeah, and in europe with like no navigation or whatever you don't know where you're at and anyway so this night and we're in somewhere in uh, belgium we had a night off and we wanted to stay somewhere close to a it should come should come as no shock if you're any sort of a Decemberist fan or familiar with our band. We wanted to stay really close to this World War One battlefield <laughs> because there was this these trenches of soldiers that are buried as they were going over the wall because Belgium had a lot of trenches. You know, it was a front line, mm. and we're like, we want to go see this fucking trench because there's these soldiers buried with their bayonets sticking up out of the ground still, and they left it as a memorial. Oh, we're like, we want to find that memorial. It'd be so cool. So we're in kind of like, you know, rural Belgium and Belgium's not that big, trying to find a hotel. And we see a hotel, motel, whatever it is. And we pull over (laughs) and uh, we go in and it's like two o'clock in the morning. You just don't do, you just didn't do that. That, you know, it was like the guy who was like sleeping behind the counter probably or whatever. He's like, no, no, no. Like, fuck you. And I was like, can I use your, your bathroom? And he was like, no. (laughs) (laughs) Get out. (laughs) <laughs> because we were eating exclusively Donner kebab at this time. <laughs> oh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> like, we were just like... It's the perfect tour. <laughs> Donner kebab and, like, fucking warm beer equals, you know. So I was just like, I don't care. I'm I'm going to that bathroom. And I went in the bathroom and came out, and he was like, you know, get the fuck out of here, rude Americans and I'll let you dump. I'll, I'll let you finish shitting, but then get the <laughs> F out of D. Fuck out of here. Yeah. So we leave and we keep driving down the road. And um, I was driving and we see the blue policia lights behind us. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And everybody's just looking at me like, how much you've had to drink? And I'm like, I don't, I don't even know. Like, I don't know. And I think we were all pretty like loaded at the time, you know, like driving a van in Europe. Exactly. Not to endorse that. Sorry, everyone. It's just yeah. what happens on a rock tour. <laughs> but uh um and I um actually didn't have a driver's license also at the time. Um <laughs> and I, I look over to Colin and I was like, I don't I don't I don't have a driver's license. And they're all like, What? I'm like, what the fuck? And so I think it was Jenny or Colin, Jenny's our keyboard player, hopped in the seat for me. And um, police pull us over, and they're like, "What you were you pu- doing?" Wait, you pulled that switcheroo. You were able to pull the that? switcheroo in the car as we like, yeah, because we're in like a van. They can't see yeah. through it. Pulled the switcheroo, and um, and the police are like, uh, "What are you doing? Like, who are you? What are you doing here?" Uh, and we're like, "Over oh, musicians, blah blah blah." And they look at me, and they're like, "We need to see your passport." <laughs> I'm like, oh, fuck, they saw me driving, and um, oh, they uh, start looking at my passport. Now, my passport at this time, too, is also a clusterfuck. Like, I don't have a license. My passport was... Um, someone else. It was someone else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was, um, I had gotten this passport at um, in Costa Rica, and back then when you got a passport... Out of, at, a, at a consulate in another country, they wouldn't laminate them. Oh. And um, wait, so wait, my wait, picture wait. had. Wait, wait, wait. You got a passport, an, a U.S. passport 
at the, at the consulate. consulate in Costa Rica. Yep, because it expired. I was traveling in Central America. Oh, okay. All right. That, and I, I think I, I was like, you know, they have the, you know, you can get them at post office. No, no, right? sorry, like, sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah, I don't so have to go to Costa Rica. <laughs> like, I think I'd gone swimming with it. Long story short, the photo was like stapled on there, and I had been like. I had been like swimming and, you know, I've got some eyebrows. I probably looked like a fucking drug runner for sure. Yeah. And um, so I hand him this like janky passport and um, they were like, get out of the car. <laughs> uh... And they thought that I was coming, that I had gone into the bathroom to plant a bomb, which. Whoa. What? I did. I probably did. <laughs> probably did. <laughs> And so they thought I was a fucking terrorist and questioned me for like a, a good hour and then let us go. We were finally like, we have fucking instruments in the car. Like, yeah. you know, what the fuck? This, that's so crazy. That's the fucking story. This, this almost, this, this. <laughs> International hijinks. No, I, I, I mean, like, I'm, I mean, I don't, I, that's a crazy story. I'd also like to say, if you guys ever write like a, like a European road tour movie that is the setup for like the musical scene where you're like we have the <laughs> instruments in the van and they're like if you are the musicians prove it to us right now yeah. <laughs> like, guys and then he's just right there people are like okay. cartwheeling across the frame left yeah, yeah. Left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man. do a concert yeah. right there yeah you- that, that tour was terrible like what because I was, I was about to ask when you when you do a tour like that are you doing like how big are the venues even are they like little this bar room type yeah yeah like 50 people you know really and then yeah. you, like f- like because we were on um kill rock stars which is a, kill know, rock stars. a yeah, yeah. infamous indie rock label from the pacific northwest cedar kinney elliot smith that translated to the British market, but not everywhere else, you know? So right. you play England and get 200 people your first time, which was encouraging, you know, or like London. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, you're not playing for anybody. <laughs> That's crazy, because it, it seemed like there too was a time where like getting signed to a specific label was like huge. I and mean, that, you know? That label was the gateway to our career, for sure. I mean, to me to even go to, to Europe and play for 50 people is a success, you know, or yeah, sure. Salt Lake City, Utah, like, yeah, or wherever, you know, that wasn't Portland. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, that, 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 I mean, Kill Rock Stars had a couple comedians on it as well. I think it still does. Really? Yeah, uh, Kurt, Kurt, Kurt Bronner, yeah, yeah, Amy Miller, Amy Miller, I think, uh, Hari Kondabolu, I think, yep, I think you're right, and I think, I think also Ray Butcher, I think, I think you're correct. Yeah, so like it's got it's got a couple comedians as well. Yeah, um, it's a great yeah that's that. But that was also you're talking when you're talking. You said it was like oh three oh four. That was also, and I feel like I talk about this too much, but that was before the internet. And I don't mean the internet's yeah. existence. I mean before it was a tool. Yeah, like that was pre YouTube. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah, social media did not exist. No, you couldn't tweet. Uh, or even like MySpace, you couldn't even do a MySpace post because MySpace no. wasn't really even around yet. No, I think, I think in '03 and '04 you had Friendster. That's yeah, crazy. you know, and like, so yep. you couldn't be like, like that's the thing about now when you're touring, where you could just be tweeting and Instagramming and TikToking and fucking just constantly putting out content about oh, what you're gonna be, and that would at least drive a handful or yeah. more people to the show. Back then, it was like. Boy, I hope those ads we yeah. paid money for to run in their local Belgian newspaper. Uh, yeah. I hope people read it. I, I hope, hope the I it. hope the posters got to the venue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like for real. <laughs> I hope the local the local radio station has been playing our fucking single. Yeah. that's the other thing. Radio. Yep, radio you mattered to, then. You had to, it mattered then. It was huge then, and yeah. God. I, yeah. Also, that was the, kind of the beginning, though, of of file sharing, which is just called Spotify now, or yeah. Yeah, Apple yeah, Music, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And that that really was that helped Napster? us. Was that Napster? It was era Napster. So oh I remember coming to a venue in um, 
like Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And so and, and us being like, how did you hear about our band? And they're like, oh, someone burned me a record, you know, that was burned me a CD, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that, that really helped us out. Which Wait, is, Kayla, what, what did you say? I said LimeWire. LimeWire, Lime yep. Yep, those, those sites helped us, you know, as much as they've also shifted the way we earn money I'll to say I, dude, I also I, I mean I know the first time I, I I've told you the first <clears throat> how I heard about you guys for the first time right I'm yeah. a picture. I'm, I did tell you this I um, vaguely remember but no yeah. it was that it was that my 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 sister this was in the year 2000 it was in 2005 this was like right this was like early summer New Orleans 2005 um my sister was like hey I'll come see this band called mock tube oh yeah Right, and that was if you don't know Mocktube is listeners, that's uh Reggie Watts. That was Reggie. his band. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I was like, all right, great. And we went, and they were doing the House of Blues in the Parish Room, which is like you know a hundred. Oh yeah. 200, yeah, small room, but they were great. They were a lot of fun, and that was also like at the time I was twenty, I was in my mid twenties, and I didn't really realize. I never thought about the idea that my younger sister would have better musical taste than me. Because <laughs> so, I, because I would never have heard about I, w I was just not I was I was a hip-hop guy and I never really but anyway she um she was like hey you know they were great and then on the drive home we were driving back to my parents house which is like a half hour away she played a December style that's right and I yeah. remember just being like who the fuck is this now who are they and she was like oh the Decembers and I had heard that name before and that's when I that's when I got into you guys but I do know that she then burnt me like two CDs of just like a scramble, like a yeah. December song scramble. Yeah. Like I wasn't sure. Next tape. Yeah, yeah. But like burnt CDs. Yeah. That you kept in that thing above, like on your visor. Yeah. That people Remember would that? steal. People would steal those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, totally. I remember leaving for a tour and having every, you've got your, your big stack of CDs and this, zip up case thing and arguing who or who's playing music over the stereo and shit. I mean, yeah. it's hilarious to like sit and wax like an old man. Cause maybe I am, but it wasn't that long ago. Technology just moves so quickly now. It's, which is yeah. cool, but yeah. it doesn't seem like that long ago. I mean, I'll tell you a great, like, Oh, case logic. That's what they were called. Case logic. That's right. right. <laughs> totally. so, um, and this is a shout out to my boy, Darius Daftari, but this is a thing he did. Uh, he had a, he had a, the small case logic. He had one of those where it was just full of burnt CDs and they all had, you know, different, you know, outcasts, AT aliens, you know, uh, Deftones, around the fur, you know, just, uh, they were all different, but every single one of those CDs had the song living after midnight by Judas priest burnt <laughs> on it 10 times. So it was a joke we'd play that only we thought we was hilarious, but whenever anyone was new was in the car, We'd be like, hey, pick a CD. And they'd pick something. And we'd put it on. And it would just be living after midnight. Oh, but Darius and I would pretend like it was whatever band it was. We're like, dude, right. so fucking, man, like, <laughs> Method Man kills it on this verse, dude. And they would just be, living! <laughs> we just did it so many times. To, so and great. no one cared. That's so amazing. But that's the kind of shit I'm, like, I don't know, like, the internet... Because, I mean, think about right now. We're doing a podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But no one's listening to this on an iPod. No. no. It's the, yeah. Let's change the name. <laughs> the Caitlin, podcast. What you, Caitlin, what would you call this right now if you had to come up with a new name right now? For a podcast? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Something, something silly to say, like periwinkle or hurry-gurry. <laughs> Some fun word. <laughs> Yeah, damn right. Damn. I mean, that's, I don't know, like we, because Caitlin and I have definitely like, she, I mean, she's done festivals in England and we've both done the Edinburgh Fringe and then we did shows. Uh, I, we both, I, we both went to Norway once to do shows. Caitlin's been a fine. second, yeah. she's been by herself. That's also weird because like, I know when you guys are playing in like a foreign speaking uh, uh, land, they, you know, it's like music, music kind of transcends language in, in many different ways, but right. it's real fucking weird when you're in like Bergen and right. you're doing a comedy show and the three comics before you are performing in Norwegian. 
So right. it sucks because not only do you not, if you don't speak Norwegian, you A, don't know what they're talking about. Right. It's hard to tell what the audience is laughing at, but B, right. you don't know that they might be up there right there, then and there talking about, you know, fucking sandwich meat. And then you're like, well, I hope my bologna bit works here. Right. And then you go right. up and now you're just doing the exact same fucking thing and you have no clue. That shit's weird. Language. That's, that's very strange to, to, yeah, to think about being solely reliant on language and then the nuances of delivery and cultural references in a, in a foreign culture to, to, to entertainment. I mean, yeah, that's, that's strange because, you know, like, like there's a lot of like, you know, like ABBA, for example, I don't know why ABBA comes to mind, but ABBA, why not? <laughs> they sing in English. Right. So there's this idea of like, if we sing in English, we will be a worldwide phenomenon. Right. Right. But comedians are like, no, I want to do comedy in my country. Like, I just, I want to do like Chinese comedy or I want to do Korean comedy or I want to do yeah. comedy that's relevant to our culture. So that's interesting that you get, you would have gigs in, oh, yeah. in places that um, don't, you know, speak English as their first tongue. Yeah. What a fucking pain in the ass. It's super crazy too. <laughs> then, like you'll watch their set. You have no idea what's happening. Uh, they'll do act outs and then they'll throw in some slang word that is the English word. So it's just like gibberish. And then like, uh uh what is the one word that we heard them say oh like uh like pug or <laughs> like <laughs> the pug it's super weird yeah or sometimes it's compl- or it's like a like a like a uh proper noun like a es que fruta juice that toyota carola <laughs> and you're like oh, i guess there's no translation wait oh that's a good one so like 5 years ago uh we were in amsterdam and <clears throat> excuse me and um I was doing a show, a spot on this show where like the host spoke English because he was an American, but all the other comics uh, all performed in Dutch. And oh, wow. I, I remember. Balls in the back. Yeah. Just, I have never had so much fun as an audience member. I had no idea what anyone was saying and I was laughing my ass off. Yeah. <laughs> Caitlin was ripped on <laughs> so, so much legal weed. And laughing so hard at these guys who were like, "There's the fruit, the fruit, the bush, the third, the first cup, all the first cup, all the shots on that guy." Was he just impersonating the predator? And, and Kate was like, "I don't know." Just like tears. And they're like, "Yeah, I guess comedy can transcend language too if you were fucking ripped enough." Yeah, it can. If no, it can. If you the power of the laugh. Yeah, enough THC yeah. in your system. Um. Chris, what is, uh, you plugged this on our show the other night, but what, you, you've got a new album coming out right now? Yeah, I do. I, I made an album, uh, it's called The Painted Porch, and it's an um, album of, of improvised guitar that I did over three days over December of 2018, and then I added to it and added various musicians to it as well. So it's an instrumental album, it's kind of my friend's like, oh, you made a jazz record, and I was like, fucking thanks, man. I didn't know, yeah. <laughs> but it has some synth on it, and it's it's kind of guitar. I called it a guitar record because that was the origin of it. Was like going into the studio and just playing, and then um, like not having any prescribed songs at all or anything, and just improvising and editing that. So that's going to okay. come out um, in a week or so. And then it'll be on vinyl, but all of the um, proceeds are going to this local organization called the Jeremy Wilson Foundation, which is a, a music-focused nonprofit. Um, so, say you um, are a musician and you have you want to do a um, a GoFundMe, for example. GoFundMe is as a, a medical GoFundMe are actually dinged for taxes often. Mm. So there's it's sort of a shelter. I don't want to say it's a shelter because that has a strange connotation, but they. Um, shelter the expense of the taxes but now they are focusing funds to go for covid reliefs so oh, sweet. Cool. relief so what is yeah. that is that on any specific uh platform label or yeah it's on a label called jealous butcher um so it'll come out as vinyl also and then yeah i just decided like to release it now it seems strange to ask people for money for something um so i decided to give all the, all the proceeds to that um or you can go to the december's website and find links for that as well yeah do it check it out yeah that's uh yeah and see and go see i hope i hope you guys 
sell out that 20th reunion tour. That's amazing. Yeah, 20 years. Awesome. Yeah, it's in August. We'll see if it happens or not. So, are you going to come know. through New York? We are. Yeah, we're going to play Central Park Summer Stage. I think. Oh, um, cool. oh so dude! Hopefully, that we're there. That is something we have never talked about. One of my biggest regrets uh, on this small level anyway, was this was in 2015. <laughs> you, got, you guys were playing at the Greek in LA. Oh yeah. Okay? At the time, Caitlin was in England. I was in LA. I was living in LA at the time. And you hit me up out of nowhere. I was like, hey man, we're playing the Greek. Want to come? And I was like, of course I do. And yeah. you were like, all right, backstage pass, whatever you need. But that same fucking night, my roommate, Ryan Kreppen, throwing this out there, fucking giving you, this is an anti-shout out. I still <laughs> love you, Ryan, but you fucked me. He had uh, ordered the Manny Pacquiao, uh, Floyd Mayweather fight. It was that same night, right? <laughs> and when I told him that I was going to come to you guys' show, he turned it around and was like, I'm having this. Oh, yeah. He was also having a party at our apartment. And he was like, this was your idea, which it wasn't. He still maintains to this day that I convinced him to order the fight and to throw a party. So he guilted me into having to text you and be like, hey, man, I can't come to the show. Because I, would get, he, I would go. I would watch the fight. You, you made the right no, choice. It was a terrible fight. Do you remember that fight? I do remember the fight. It was a boring fucking fight watching <laughs> two already eight-figure millionaires make more money. Right. I would have much rather seen you guys at the Greek. But I did meet up with you and you, me, and I can't remember the other two guys. They're comedians. We ended up at one of those after-hour bars yeah. in Echo Park, which Echo are Park. strange. Those places are strange, but they're fun. Yeah, that, that place with like the big white uh like uh cushions where like uh looks like a moth looks like a like an Italian yeah. like horror movie might be shot in there or something. That place well, you were those co- that was fun, but do you remember the thing is you can't Oh order. no, then we ended up at that, that Thai restaurant. The Thai well, restaurant. But it was an after it was like after that hours. Was it. Yes. Where you, all they served was like Miller Lite yeah. in cups, coffee yeah. cups. But you yeah. couldn't order beer. You had to call it cappuccino. Yes. And if you said beer or anything booze related, they asked you to leave. But if you were like, oh, I need three cappuccinos. Yeah. Give you a- yeah, yeah. No, but it was a comedy night happening. And I, I fell in love that night. What? Did you? Oh, yeah. No, no. I remember a woman, like, I'm, I'm totally kidding when I said I fell in love. There was there were women so there? much fucking blow in that place. It was crazy. I thought it was just a bunch of fucking <laughs> comedians and you. Uh, I mean, not to say, yes, they're female comedians, but I don't remember. I just remember it being like me, you, and three other dudes. We didn't, no one gave us blow, but uh, yeah. this yeah, woman sat on my lap and was like, like professing her love to me. And I was like, holy shit. Like, I'm finally having like this moment on tour where there's a woman involved, which has never happened in my life on tour once. And uh, <laughs> that's how fucking square I am and our band is. And then she got up and left. And I was like, oh, everybody's fucking flying in here. I, I forgot be, about that place. It's some yeah, Thai, it was a Thai restaurant. It was a Thai restaurant. It was a pretty fun comedy night. Yeah. I don't want to say where it is in case it's still open. But that yeah, it's, rules. Your place was great. And I know everyone knows where it is. I don't even have to fucking say. I saw um, the dashboard lights for like an hour in there. I mean, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, would, I wouldn't say you guys are square. You're more of a rhombus. <laughs> <laughs> We're polyhedral. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um well awesome yeah man get the app uh, yeah check out check out the decembers if you don't already know who they are they are fantastic do you still work with uh with red fang i do actually i just i just made another record for them that's supposed to come out uh in may which i think is gonna get pushed back but i i just produced another so i, I produce records also for people and have a studio in portland yeah and um it'll come out probably in the fall that's my third record i've made with them um awesome yeah check if google red fang and watch the that video with, with it, all the pbr that's a fucking great historic video. dog yeah Good they're dog. very very funny very funny band um and amazing band yeah they're they're, they're they're great uh thank you chris yeah stay healthy stay safe and uh next time we can get together let's please do it's been too yes. long Let's let's book some book some shows for both of you in Portland or something. Hell selfishly. Yeah, exactly. We'll do it. We'll yeah. do it. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for coming on, my friend.
for sure. All right. Bye-bye. Later. Bye, guys. See you. Hey, this is Caitlin. As you may know, I like to end every episode with a song. And given that this is Chris Funk's episode, I did spend the past several hours attempting to cover my favorite December song, Make You Better. But it just hasn't turned out quite the way that I wanted. So I thought that I would share a song that I wrote that I am really proud of. It's under my moniker, Candid Bandit, and it's called Every Shade of Green.